Tail.com here for a wheeled cooler or a rolling cooler review. Many of you guys at home wanted to see a review of the different rolling coolers. How well do they roll on asphalt, on grass, on sand, as well as how long do they hold ice? We're just wrapping up an ice retention test of these budget rolling coolers as well as this Igloo Trailmate that's not really a budget, it's over $100. Uh, I'll link to that video in the description below so you get an idea of how long they hold ice. But for the sake of this video, we want to show you these coolers rolling on different surfaces give you an idea of the different diameter of wheels so that you know how well are they going to handle asphalt uh, versus sand versus gravel etc. You might notice that we're missing a few coolers that we've already tested in the past like the El uh, Pelican Pro Gear Elite had wheels on it. We've also tested the Kysik which had the little roller blade wheels on the side of it as well as the Evo which was a semi soft sided cooler uh, with wheels similar to some of these igloos. I'll address those coolers at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get these coolers rolling. They are all filled up with water from the result of the ice retention test. So I would say they're filled up between 50 and 60% of the way with water. So you'll get an idea of how they roll with, uh, with weight in them. And if you're wondering, do they leak? We have just wrapped up that video and I'll link to that in the description below as well. So you get an idea if uh, you're moving them around and sloshing the water around or the ice around, is it gonna leak? Uh, like I said, I'll link to that in the description below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. We will start with the Coleman on the end and wheel it on asphalt, on grass, as well as sand. First up is the Coleman Extreme 50 quart. So as you can see right off the bat, when you're wheeling this, the, uh, the water's coming out. This is filled up about 50% of the way with the ice melt from the ice retention test. Um, so when you're wheeling it, uh, keep that in mind. If you have ice and water mixed in there, that it's gonna slosh around. Handles the asphalt perfectly fine. No problem with that, but you can see how much water we're leaking. One thing I will point out is when you start to push on it, you got to be careful not to engage this button because this is how it uh, it drops down. So you can roll it this way, but keep that in mind that when you're wheeling something heavy, you uh, you tend to push on that button, which then obviously I'll show you guys what it does. It collapses it down. So uh, we'll uh, keep that in mind. Now we will move over to the grass. Handles hard grass, perfectly fine. They're rather large wheels. No problem with the grass. Back this way, it's a little bit more forceful, obviously. And last but not least, we'll take it over to the sand and see how it rolls. All right, here's some sand here. Fine on the, it's fine on the ground, on the hard pack, but in the sand, it gets a little bit more challenging to move. As you can see, it's weighted down pretty heavy. You can see the tracks that I'm leaving in the sand. You definitely could do it, but uh, it's, it's certainly a challenge. So for your sake of time at home, we are not going to wheel the, the Coleman as well as the Latitude 60 and the Max Cold because they are almost identical wheels. You can see they're almost the exact same wheels, same diameter, but the exception is the Island Breeze here. You can see it's a much smaller wheel compared to the two. So we will wheel this one uh, next. And again, this is the Igloo Island Breeze. Same, it feels the same as the others on, uh, on asphalt, no problem, it wheels. Uh, same thing, it's leaking some water, you can see that. And this is also filled uh, about 50% of the way. It rolls, but you see what just happened? I kicked it on accident, I hit that button. So when you're pushing, you gotta keep in mind to keep your hand off that button, otherwise you're just gonna collapse the telescopic handle. So next we'll move over to the grass, and this is very similar with the grass, it handles pretty fine. Uh, no problem with hard packed grass. I su suspect that we're going to have issues now as soon as we hit over to the sand just because it's a, such a small diameter of a wheel. So let's head there next. The approach of sand I can feel it's significantly harder to wheel uh, and I think it's because it's the smaller wheel. You'll see that they'll drop into the sand here in a second. So yeah, they just almost completely bog down and I feel like I'm dragging dead weight. I mean it just feels like I'm dragging dead weight compared to the other one. So big difference. Wow. Uh, when you get to sand with something like the Island Breeze with a smaller diameter wheel. So next we'll jump over to the Quantum which has a little bit larger wheel. Okay, next up is the Quantum and as you can see, this is slightly different wheels. So this is what is most common, uh, larger diameter. These are smaller but different wheels than the Island Breeze. So we'll see how that handles on the asphalt as well as the sand because that made the big difference with the smaller wheels. On asphalt, I think this is the smoothest one that we've tested for sure. It uh, It's really smooth across asphalt. No problem there. We will flip and 
come back the other way now. Um, no problem, I'm not really hitting the button, I just hit the button on half there. So keep that in mind, if you've got a heavy load, you got to stay off that button. So we'll flip over to the grass now. Hard packed grass, no problem. It's relatively easy and smooth. Now let's head to the, to the sand. This cooler handles way better than the Island Breeze, but now we're about to hit to the good stuff here at the sand. I think it's, uh, it's, it's harder than those larger diameter wheels like we have on some of those other igloos, but it's better than the Island Breeze, but man, it's almost like dead weight, pulling dead weight through the sand. You can see the tracks that I'm laying. I mean, the, the tracks are relatively deep, so uh, not much support from the wheel there. Last but not least is the Igloo Journey, and for uh, what it's worth, this is actually one of the favorite coolers of all these coolers out here that we've reviewed from friends and family. They just love it. The wheels, we'll roll this up here and show you the difference between the wheels. Look at the wheels size difference between the Igloo Journey and the uh, Latitude. I mean, these are almost twice as big. Look at the size difference there. So super easy to roll. I think that the handle is really well positioned and it comes out of your way. And uh, this is a 70 quart cooler versus a 50 or 60 quart cooler. So uh, much bigger. So the wheels are necessary. Rolling on the pavement is a breeze, no problem there it's, uh, it's like a wheelbarrow almost it's uh, it's so big so no problem wheeling across forward or backwards because the handle the the um, collapse button is here so it's easy to get on either side and push or pull we'll hop over to the grass which is the same I mean no problem whatsoever coming or uh, going I think it's worth pointing out that this is the easiest cooler to roll and it's also the largest cooler to roll. The moment of truth here is how does it handle the sand? Now we're starting to hit some of that softer sand. No problem. It's just as easy. Turning, no problem. We'll see if we can get some of the divots here. Take a look at the wheels up close in the sand. You can see how it drops down in the sand. But uh, I'm getting no problem rolling across this sand with the trail mate. So if you're looking for a beach cooler, uh, I think this is the way to go for sure. I mean, I'm having no problem rolling through that. Really impressed with the uh, with the trail mate. It's like, it's roughly the same as wheel wheeling on this uh, sand versus wheeling on asphalt or the grass, which is drastically different than any of the other wheeled coolers that we've reviewed. So there you have it, a look at how the wheeled coolers handle different terrain. Now at the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to mention some of the coolers that we've already reviewed, like the Pelican Pro Gear Elite. If I had to make the comparison between that cooler and some of these, I would say it's very similar to this Igloo or the Coleman on the end, very similar wheels. I thought it handled terrain in a similar fashion, but keep in mind that that cooler is a lot heavier heavier than some of these coolers here in front of me. The Kysik had the little small uh, roller blade wheels, handled asphalt and concrete perfectly, but as soon as you get it in the grass and sand, uh, it gets a little bit shaky. The wheels just are so small, they can't really handle that terrain. Last but not least is the Evo, which is a, se a semi-rigid soft-sided cooler. It's a soft-sided cooler, but it actually holds its shape. It has wheels on it as well, very similar to this Igloo, as well as the two Coleman and the Pelican Pro Gear Elite. Handle uh, trained very well but I will have to say that the best wheeled cooler hands down goes to the Igloo Trailmate. I mean you can see that the wheels are almost twice the size compared to any other wheeled cooler that we reviewed. It handles the terrain way better than than any other wheeled cooler that we've tested. I'm gonna have links in the description below of all these coolers as well as a corresponding price range. Like I said in the beginning we just wrapped up with an ice challenge so I'll give you an idea of how long these can hold ice. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for the suggestion. This was your idea from uh, many YouTube commenters at home. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. It's what helps us to keep going. We'll be back next time for more video reviews.